Hi. Hi there. You know, uh, Rain wants us to stop by the transformation area, so shall we head on over? <laughs> yes, let's just head on over to the area. <laughs> to the area. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, studio Lab. It's a lab. That's what it is. I like area. Area's good. Area. It's very general in its description. <laughs> we'll call it Area 52. It's the one right after go. Area 51. So <laughs> Nice. Like so let's on head out to let's on head out. Let's on head let's to Let's on hand out to Area 52. Okay. Oh, well, it's a fairly nice day out. It's, you know, it's, it's nice it's, and pretty. Not too cold and chilly. Just nice. Yeah. There's birdies and the squirrels spring, and things. Spring <gasps> has sprung, so that's why, you know. But uh, Yeah. Well, uh, here we are. Um, I guess I'll just ring the doorbell. This is, we're at the area with the doorbell. Hey, mm -hmm. hey guys, what's going on? Hey, how hey. you doing? Doing good, doing good. Come on in, come on in. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, wow, you got lots of stuff going on in here today. Yes, I've actually been going through a bunch of the notes that uh, that Lux had left, and oh my gosh, it's, it's a mess. Like, uh, are they? A complete mess. Yeah, her, I was just gonna say. Yeah, her research <laughs> notes are about as organized as she is. Uh, which I see. Is to say, I wonder, not at I all. Um, yeah, I'm, but I did find I'm, some, some cool stuff. I, I'm very excited to see that you've put the leprechauns to work. Uh, they're they're cleaning up and putting things away. And yes, well, uh, it turns out with the speakeasy downstairs, it's real easy to get them to work. Yeah, I I'm. I'm a little concerned that you've dressed them up like Oompa Loompas, though. Uh, maybe you should well, rethink their attire. No, I, I okay. Like no, All right, I don't like, like it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. When I, okay. when I cosplay as Willy Wonka, it's nice to have some Oompa Loompas. It, it works, yeah. They don't there like the orange paint, but what are you going to do? I know. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. What do, you, what do you got for us? I was, I was looking around and, you know, in the notes and stuff, and I saw some interesting research that she had started on and never finished oh and okay. uh, so i i kind of dove in with both paws and got a you know a, a breakthrough that i want to try out today uh it's Did you all get right a well, lavender coat too yes but we're we're we'll save that for the cosplay later oh okay okay yes, yes. that's where the oompa loompa leprechauns come in yep yep exactly ah so uh, I've got ah. this. I've got this liquid. I wanna. I wanna give you, Tabe, and it's called the Special Transformation Unified Polymorphic Infused Distillation. Wow! I don't want to try and say that because I could not. I'll just go well, with it, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there there is an acronym. What? Say oh, that again. The acronym. Let me hear that again. Special Transformation Unified Polymorphic Infused Distillation. Well, that. That's Build. stupid. Yeah, it's <laughs> okay. what it is. I mean, I'm kind of workshopping other names, but uh, oh, kind of. Right now, but it kind of says what it. Good. It's kind of says what it does. Yeah. I mean, it's a catalyst that allows for transformation into other animals. Um, oh, okay. When you're in, when the subject ingests oh. it and it's subjected. All right, to well, Taven, rate. here, here, drink this uh, jar of stupid fluid. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, it's I'm grape flavor. Here it goes. I like that. I like it. To match the lavender coat. Yes, yes. How did, how did it taste? Uh, there was a little bit of a grape flavor. I think it was more lemony mixed with um, Purell. <laughs> but there was oh. some grape involved too. Yeah, it I'll have to. Best, but, you know. I'll have to cut back on certain chemicals. Then I didn't get them quite right, but uh, this should still work just fine. I, I'm pretty sure it, uh, I'm not going to get COVID now, though. No, um, definitely not. The the Purell will definitely save save you from COVID. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So let me see. Uh, yes, go ahead and stand yes. on the X there, Taven. Okay. And I am standing on the X. What is that sound? Uh, I'm just setting up the transformation array. All right. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. Now I've got it set. It has to be set on random for animal transformations. Um, okay. That, okay. At, least, at least according to my research. So I don't know what you're going to become, but we'll find out as soon as the smoke clears. So I'm going to start the ray up in three, two, 
Bart, 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 Bart. Oh. You're much smaller. You're much, much um, smaller than you were. Um. I feel a lot smaller. I'm not sure what else I feel other than um, head, but there you're, is smaller. You're also people. very cute. Uh, I, I <gasps> think. I like that. I think you're an axolotl. You're um, oh. I'm an accident? No, an axolotl. No, an axolotl. Oh, a lot of accidents. <laughs> yes. No, well, that it's too. Axolotl. It's it's like it's like a little lizard with with face things that makes him look happy all the time. Oh, uh, there's those yeah, happy I little lizards you see on the on the internet all the time. Yeah. Is that why all of a sudden I felt a little bit colder? You feel and that's little, why I don't yes. have as much fluff anymore. I have no fluff. No anymore. fluff. You have Nothing no fluff. But yeah, you're cold blooded now. Yeah. And I'm cold blooded. That would be why. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. And mm -hmm. Okay. You, you yeah. Got that and, and little smile. Like, I can look around and and uh, I have this tongue thing that goes out and like there's a little thing over there. I'm gonna take my tongue and it goes out and back and I just got it. Did you see me? Yes, get you a did. That was a fly. You, uh, that was. Oh. That was a fly. The fly was down. Um, I'm. <laughs> I'm very actually I, happy to hear all of that, but there it is. I hope. Oh, I, I hope oh, you don't mind. Wow! The look at that. You can you can blink your eyes separately. They don't blink together. Yeah, it's that's just one blinks and wow, then the other weird. blinks. That is weird. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a wave. It's weird. I don't yeah. Know I can you crazy. like make the things on the side of your face do stuff? Let, let me try. Let me try. Uh, wiggle, wiggle. I'll try going. Um, I'm gonna make a big puffy face to see if it doesn't. Here we go. Puff. Oh no no stop. Yeah, stop, no. stop stop oh. they're inflating stop. Stop. they're inflating yeah. like on a cartoon okay, stop no 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 they're okay oh, wow yeah. that's better I started well. flying there for a second I think uh, uh yeah wow. I, I may not um, have the stupid juice completely worked out right yet I think it uses some kind of cartoon uh catalyst it's to, got to use to some kind of truth yeah because when he held uh, his breath like that, that yeah. yeah. Is that why I have the letters A C M E on my on my little flipper foot? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, probably. Probably. I did. I did use a little bit of cartoon know-how to get this working. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like okay, uh, replacing okay. the uh, replacing the genes with a frog in the dinosaur movie, you know, to make right, them right work. Yeah. Well, and that and was that a cartoon also. Why, that explains mm -hmm. why in the transformation I saw Donald Duck. Not Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, and Bugs Bunny. And there was a flash because there was an acting. Oh, thing, so yeah. That, that was it, it. Could, be, hmm. could be. Well, so they live um, in the ray, kind of like uh, on Star Trek when you. The, no, we the, don't talk it, about Star Trek. When you're the, we don't. Okay. No, we don't talk about that anymore. Paramount <laughs> said. Paramount said they're going to sue us if we talk about it much more. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Yes. Mm. Um, so, Tabin, tell me, how does it Hi. feel being an axolotl? Well, um, it does actually feel like there's a lot of accidents involved, as a matter of fact. Oh, and there's one. Quite I forgot to go, um, go to the restroom. So that's oh, bad yeah, that's probably there. a so side sorry. effect. You'll have to clean that up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's all right. So that, the leprechauns will take care of it. You're pushing your luck, like raccoon. I feel a little bit... That's right, the Or lep leprechauns. More cold blooded. Leprolupus. I can um, I can magically eat insects that I did not intend on doing. So that's well, that's um, a reflex. A perk, I guess. That's a reflex. Um, I don't think you can help doing it. Um, I did not feel like I could. Help but doing that. Uh, oh, there's no. another one coming towards you. There's a, another. No, oh, no, oh, let me see it. Oh, gonna, oh no, no. Oh, 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 you caught it. Oh, oh, good, tasty. I couldn't help it. I that was a big um, one. Yeah. That was a big uh, one. Yeah, I. I, I think that was a horse fly. I got to get that horse out of the back. <laughs> uh, you yeah. Anyways, that horse out of the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, any last words as an axolotl before I try to transform you back? Hmm. Well, I would say an advice to any fur that wants to transform into an axolotl: make sure that you're okay eating insects, because that's just what you're gonna do. Well, that's the only advice I really have. To say they are. They are good protein. Uh, you know, I have heard there's, that. I there's, heard that. there's nothing wrong with it. In some, some countries, they, that's you know, a primary source of protein. So, like where there's lots of monkeys, because then you've got your primary source. That's primate. Oh, well, that too. That too. That too. All right. Well, uh, I'm pretty I, sure I that I'm pretty sure that pretty sure that eight is not prime. I'm pretty sure that you're right. 
probably isn't. I'm not a I'm not a mathy raccoon. Uh, so no. Let's let's, uh, uh, let's change him back because yes. I don't want it to be B F F A. Well, yeah. and truthfully, I'm afraid we're gonna step on him if we're not careful. All right. I know oh, he keeps skittering around. Yeah. Uh, skitter. If you yeah. can stay, can't stop skittering. skittering. Yeah, stop skittering and yeah. stay okay, yeah, stay I, still. I, I, I okay. Uh, I'm just gonna right. pick him up by his little thing and put him on the X. There All right. Okay, he's on the All right. X. Okay, stay. Stay clear. Stay clear. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. Okay. And three, two, one. Axel all noises, Axel all noises, Bart. Come back! Hi! All right, it worked. Hi! Um, I like you do look happier. Noise. You do look a lot happier than you did before we transformed you. I he's, think that's the axolotl. Rain, mm -hmm. he's still got the face things. Uh, oh. They'll probably go away. Okay, well. I think, didn't, didn't Lux have some uh, nice ointment or something? Y yeah, um. Well, we're out of the ointment, but we do have the spray. Um, that might work. Okay. It I might work, too. I, um, I, I yeah. really got to figure out where she got these things from and, and start ordering some more. Because we are kind of I'm I have sure a feeling it's we from actually don't want to know. Third world country somewhere, yes. <laughs> probably. Yeah, see, that's what I'm thinking. Probably. I'll call mm -hmm. the pharmacia down in Cozumel and see if they've got anything similar. But uh, take the spray and... It's maybe morning and night for the next three days. They should start to I shrink you down. The next three years. <laughs> oh no no no! It shouldn't take that long. Besides, we're gonna okay, transform good, good. him, you know, I again. I can go to and, cons. Yeah. Well. Uh, well. Yeah. You'll be the only axolotl. You'll be an pup. axolotl dog. Yeah. That's right. I'll be, I'll be the only axolotl dog there. That's no, true. there's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> Definitely. A little bit. I little think bit. you'd be the only one. Well, he's the only Tabin, so. Well, except for That's Evil right. Tabin. The wonderful thing about Tabins. Our Tabins are wonderful things. Indeed. They're, some they things are made lot, out of lot, something, lot, and lot, lot. bottoms oh, are made out of springs. Yes, yes. Well, um, yes. <laughs> well, sir, I think we should head back to the studio. Probably a um, good idea. I think I'm going to come with you because right. the Oompa Loompas are creeping me out. Okay. They are yeah, a little bit. They really are. Okay, yeah. I, hey, boys, why don't you guys wash off the orange paint and get back in your green because you are kind of creeping me out. Oh, thank goodness. This stuff was giving me a rash. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's, 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 go. Right, let's, go. Go. let's, go. let's head on back. Oh, well, I'm glad you're joining us, um, Rain, because oh, yeah, we have a lot too. of stuff to talk about today. So that we'll, uh, once we get back to the studio, I think we'll just go ahead and start our podcast. We haven't even started yet today. As soon as Tabin got here, I said, let's head over to your place. So, oh, well, great. Um, great. So this is our first uh, thing we're going to do here. So oh, I feel kind of I, kind of special that you guys you know, come and visit me first. Yeah, visit you first. All right. Well, uh, hello, folks. Uh, you know, we started with the transformation station because uh, since it just not? was a thing to do. Why not? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and start our regular show now. Uh -huh. We've done that first. That was kind of like a, you know what? That's kind of like our new cold open would be the transformation ray for this oh, episode. Like, episode? Like this episode? Saturday Night episode. Live. Except yeah. Thursday night. Sort of on Zoom. Or Saturday morning show. It's like Saturday morning or cartoons because the show comes out yeah. on a Saturday. Yeah. Anyway. Time is so confusing. Anyway, before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, there's a new study out there on the effects of Cardi B's music on heart health. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's called Cardi Biology. That was definitely a B side right there. Yeah, that was. was I made that joke up this movie. morning, actually. Oh, you did? <laughs> I oh. did. Well, okay, okay. It moves well, up she, to B and a half. She kind of beat you to it. Uh, oh, did she? Yeah. Yeah, one of her songs, she she said something about cardio, like Cardi B or something like that. Oh, right. Speaking, uh, you know, speaking of cardio and like working yes. out and everything, uh -huh. uh, I have a friend that opened a gym uh, recently. And with this gym, the instructors, as, as an outreach, the instructors would go from door to door to tell people about the benefits of joining the gym. And he, he named the gym Jehovah's Fitness. 
no, 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 no. <laughs> well, it's so I'm so glad the music is swelling and we can actually but, get but, our show know, started. But you know, before the music swells, uh huh. Barely, I want you to. <laughs> I like how you said that. You're like, yeah, Taven, what now? What I now? want yes. you to <laughs> ask me. Yes. Bro, do you bro. want this pamphlet? Bro, do you want this pamphlet? Yeah, bro, sure. Oh. Oh. Now the music, now the... <laughs> oh. Well, okay. hello and hello and Moo Bark Fluff and greetings and welcome to our little slice of the interwebs. If you're still sticking around, thank you for sticking around. I am Barely Normal and with me this week is Rain and Tabin. Hello, hello. Welcome Hi. back from Tabin, Texas. No, welcome back from Texas, Tabin. <laughs> from Tabin, Texas. <laughs> how was the con? Hi. Hi, how was the con? Hi. Hi. Was that good, huh? <laughs> it was good. I have a bit of a review about it if you would like me to do that. Okay, but before you do, I want to know. Before you do it, I want to know, how did you like Dallas? I, I, well, <laughs> oh, because that's just, I know. That's the Dallas theme song, yeah. It's the Dallas theme song. Um, I mean, I, I didn't see much of it. I was at the con the whole time, so. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so give us a recap of TFF. TFF. And um, I have to apologize to all you first. I have a little bit of con cred, so my voice isn't up to par. It's really weird. So I never had this happen to me. And this is a true thing. I'm not just building up to some crazy, stupid pun or something. This has really happened to me today. We will never know for sure. But go ahead. No. We will never know for sure. So, um, yeah, saw you first. I went to um, Texas for a fiesta 2023 a few weeks ago. Um, and, well, actually, as of this recording, we got back just like three days ago. And just this morning, I woke up, which is a good thing, I guess. Yes, I, um, yes. Theoretically. And I had a, a 102.9 temperature. Oh, 102. no. 102.9. I was like, um, this isn't good. No. And then... So I took it again right after just to make sure. And then it was 102.5. Okay, it's fine. So I went, I, that was down. Oh, no, no, going down, down. Down by so, 0.4, yes. But, you know, I mean, it's still 102 is not That's not great. Good. Yeah. No. So I I went to bed, and then I got, up, got back up a little bit later. Then it was at 102.0. Okay. Went back to bed, got up a little later, and then it was 99.7. Right. Went to bed, got, and then later it was 98.9. And I don't know. It's like this weird flash fever thing that I had. I don't, mm. I don't really yeah. know. Weird. That, that happens. happens I guess. Yeah. That happens. Um, yeah. A fever just means that your body is fighting infection. Mm -hmm. And that means that your body fought that infection and won. I hope I'm surprised so. you didn't hear the little the little boxing bells in the background with the, with the white blood cells fighting off your infection. I did not hear that. No, I did not. Mm. Hear that. He was asleep. <laughs> and okay. and I and I did well, a COVID true. test just to see because I thought, well, I wonder if that means I got COVID from the con, and I'm it got negative. So I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so I saw a friend that I hadn't seen in three years actually since I went to um, TFF last last time, mm -hmm. and this is the friend that started the um, how go for that type of thing. Ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so we had a lot yeah, of things yeah. there. Um, and I saw Clovix; he was there. Nice. Oh, um, so just separate, not about the con, but like on on the plane, like watching the the suitcases being loaded in and everything. I actually got to sit at a window seat, probably because mm -hmm. no one else wanted to sit by this big huge dog. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, so I got to sit at a window seat and saw them load this the luggage on, and there was one luggage that had like telegram stickers and furry stickers, like clearly for, and I'm like, I know where you're going. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway. Um, and then it turned out it was yours. And, and it wasn't mine. I should say it wasn't oh, okay. mine either. <laughs> yeah. uh, where was Tatsu riding up in first class? We were both in first class. <gasps> he let me, they, they let a big dog in first class, probably because oh, they were goodness. too scared of anything else. Nice. I know. It was crazy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So TFF attendance this year yes. was 7,336, oh, which nice. is amazing because the previous attendance last year was 5,494, and, and it hadn't taught that. So we got like 2,000 more. Mm -hmm. Because of that, TFF is now the third largest furcon in the world. 
beating FWA's last year attendance of 73,000. Se- I'm using 7,300. Wow. <laughs> okay, say. I was going to oh, say 73,000. So, so. Good Lord. <laughs> no, yeah, not, not, not that much. So, um, but yeah, it's a pretty good attendance. Huge. And by the way, the standings now are FC is the fifth largest in the world with 53,88. This year in BLFC is sixth largest with 52,34 last year. So that, that's where we are. Uh, we'll I'll have just to see where BLFC lands. We'll have to see where BFL, BLFC lands after their summer thing this at, year after their uh s- midweek november con, yeah october yeah yeah, yeah in yeah, the season. snow in this yeah and actually apparent so clovis said that snow doesn't start hitting like around the mountains until like december actually mm-hmm. around e- there. except for the october that we did it it snowed and it snowed oh, it? yeah yes, yes it snowed oh, that october that yeah that october the the first year that they came back that October, it oh. snowed, and yeah, I had to go mm-hmm. buy chains oh. and some cables for the car, too. <gasps> Sorry, children. Yeah. The, the chains were for me. <laughs> Something entirely different. It's, it's never much. It's totally different, yes. So um, I'll say a bunch of things that's kind of in a random order. So something that has never happened to me before, there was a tornado warning, and there was like this big oh, no. sound in the hotels and stuff, and like tornado warnings and stuff. And it's like, I had never, it was crazy. We didn't know what to do. Um, mm-hmm. We survived. And it was really weird. It was like sunny. And then all of a sudden, it was like raining hard and all this thunder. Mm -hmm. And and then it was sunny. It was Mm -hmm. so surreal. I'd never been involved in that. Texas has, Um, the mm -hmm. Texas Plains have some wild weather. Apparently. Uh, I lived there for 20 years and Texas weather is just like, it's bipolar. It's either hot or Um, it's gigantic storms. uh, And apparently it's not cold too often because you have to bipolar in order to get it. No, No, no. Okay. Um, so anyway, the hotel, um, was nice. I hadn't been in this hotel, the new hotel yet. It has nice rooms, really nice rooms. The con space was actually nice, laid out. Things were close together, like the regis- big registration area and the panel rooms and the, the main dance and everything was actually very well close together. So that was nice. The registration line, I complained, well, both my honey and I complained at first because, so we... We were registered as super sponsor, and mm-hmm. sponsors and super sponsors could get in line and reg- uh, well start registering at four. So we were mm-hmm. there at you know three forty five whatever, and there's like a line. Admittedly, I thought it was attendee. I didn't realize it was only su- sponsor super, sponsor. but there's a line, and then they put us in the separate line, and they said, "Oh, this is sponsor super sponsors." The line they put us in, I. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I was so mad because, oh, why are they putting us? And they were all going before us. And we were like first or second in line in this sponsor, super sponsor line. But of course, I didn't realize that she meant everything. And I was like, why are they moving all them ahead of us? And I was very, so I was so unhappy. But it ended up taking us only a half hour to get registered and everything. Later mm-hmm. that day, once the attendee opened and everything, and the next day, like it was a four to six hour wait so to get registered. Ugh. So I guess I didn't really have anything to uh, complain about since it only took us a half hour. Yeah, that's yes. not bad actually. Yeah, that was really good. Any- so overall, that went well. It's really weird. There was no badge checking or it was spotty, except for masks. Like if you went to the dealer stand, you had to wear masks. So the, the thing on the website said, you're supposed to wear masks in all con spaces and stuff. Like hardly anyone was wearing masks and even staff. No one was checking or anything. It was kind of weird and stuff. It's um, Texas. And it was only sometimes. I don't know. But anyway, my honey's dining experiences were oh, not that great. And Clovix also said okay. his dining, all, all his dining experiences were horrible. And we found out why. But let me tell you anyway first about my honey's dining experience. So one of the nights, well... When he ordered on menu, it was fine. He had a salmon one night, and that was great and stuff. Another night at the same restaurant, he ordered a burger, and he has mayonnaise and lettuce only when he does burgers. Okay. And this one, like the menu said it comes with, I don't know, like lettuce, their special sauce, and tomato, maybe something else. So, okay. so he said this, and, and the, the person wrote it down in detail, <laughs> like detail. And um, when he finally got the burger... It had. It was dry with pickles. Pickles weren't even listed on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that I mean that wasn't like what's going on. And the person, as I said, wrote it down like 
complete instructions. Like they weren't even hmm. shorthanding. And so Clovix overheard. And so this is what happened. It turned out that like no one that was working in those restaurants that night um, were mm -hmm. actually cooks in the thing. These, these were like just ho gen general hotel staff oh, that were doing this. Okay. Maybe a janitor. I don't know. <laughs> so they had no idea what they were doing. But so, so that's great, I guess. Uh huh. But as far as the con goes, though, the con was actually really good. You know, I had a Weird Al panel, which went really, really, really great. Um, so great. We, there was, you know, they, they scheduled it at like 2.30, which is weird because, you know, other things are scheduled at 3 and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So because of that, there was, you know, some, some first left came and went. But there was about 35 mm -hmm. that stayed, you know, that were constant throughout the entire time. And overall, there was probably about 50 and every first seemed to have a really good time. And so um, that was like an amazing success. I had okay. a story time, which was, I mean, I, it was okay. I thought it was not great, not horrible. It was a story time. Some first said they had a great time. So, okay. I, I guess that was okay. a success then. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I also participated in their floor wars. And I got to the, I got past the first round ever for me. <laughs> Yay. And, he, and Yay, you know, it's been like six or seven of these floor wars, and I've never got past the first round. But of course, you know, it's kind of, it's kind, of, you know, it, it's random who you're going to get. So it, could, I could have very easily gone the other way. But I, I feel very good that I went past. And then I watch later, like my performance and like how I dance and stuff in both the first and second rounds, and I wasn't, it wasn't that great. <laughs> but um, but a lot of first came up and actually said that day and the next day that I did so great. So I don't know, maybe I'm just so used to doing dancey stuff that I, I don't know things. Anyway, so all that stuff that I did was great overall, I think. It had pretty good dancey, some good DJs and good stuff. Uh, so next year's guests of honor. Oh, and by the way, Rick Griffin, you know, House Pets was right. one of this year's guests of honors. Nice. And I miss. I was going to go to his guest, meet the guest of honor, Rick Griffin panel, and mm -hmm. um, I missed it. Ah, uh, that's too bad. But next year's guest of honors are Black Cheetah Studios, if any of you guys know them, Winter Snow Wolf, and our very beloved uh, microbiologist, Trice. Mm. So she's nice. um, guest of honor. So very, very nice. And are you ready for this ready. rain? Next year's theme is cyberpunk. <gasps> Nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. nice. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I, st I still don't want to go back to Texas. Okay, oh, well, that's right. It's, it's, twenty years there. Twenty years there is enough. It seemed like sixty. But overall, I think it was a great con. It went great. Every first seemed to have a really great time, and um, I would go again. Nice. So right. nothing, nothing scandalous like uh, what was it? Uh, Fernal Equinox had. What happened the there? I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> there was somebody was. Naked dancing on the dance floor. A naked dancing, yes, on yes. the dance floor. Yeah. Uh-huh. Grinding yeah. up against the security guard with, the, mm -hmm. with oh. his junk uh, against. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was not. Yep. Yeah. No. Don't do no. that. Keep, Don't do that. Keep your clothes on. It's bad. Yes. I bad, did bad. not do that. Good. 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 Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Well, uh, Tabin, I see that you have things listed that you want to talk about. Two Even of though them. you didn't I, list the con thing, but let's uh, let's go to your things. So, oh, a few weeks ago, you might remember that my honey uh -huh. made up a, a pun on his own that I was very yes. proud of. So I had to let every fur know because he doesn't do that. He made another pun. Okay. I was, oh, I was telling him about guitar picks and, and, and like guitars and, and stuff like that and how you're supposed to hold the pick at 95 degrees, not 90 degrees. And... My honey said, that's very picky. Uh -huh. oh. I mean, but I was proud of it. That's you know? a cute. I mean, you gotta... It is a cute. It is a cute. Yeah. Oh, little bit of a rant. Okay. Well, I mean, let me, really quick, let me hear your, both your thoughts first. Daylight savings time. What do you think? Hate it. Why do you hate daylight savings? Because the, the time change is just unnecessary in this day and age. And when I went over to Tabin's puppy den to help out, I was tired because the time was changing. It was not not a fan. I don't mind the change. I just wish we would pick a time 
and stick with it forever instead well, of Well, supposedly that's twice what's a year. supposedly that's what's going to happen soon. Supposedly, but yes. I've been hearing this since I was 12. So True, but apparently they 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 have moved forward and Biden's supposed to sign it before next change. That so would be awesome. November, yes. Because and then we would stay on this time forever. So exactly. Be, so so this would become standard time. Right. No more spring forward, fall back, spring forward, fall back. Right. And so this would just be Pacific time. They would take right. the S and the D out. So you'd have Eastern time, stand, Eastern time, Pacific time. Yep. Not specific time. That is a, like when you go to an appointment, you want to go at a specific time. Usually. But this would be a Pacific time. Yes. Maybe I should have some more weed because I think seem to be a little out of it right now. Mm. <laughs> I had some dandelions earlier and it's just been terrible. Oh, yeah. The, the pollen. <laughs> Not good for you. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So what is your thoughts on daylight savings time, Mr. Tabin? Well, indeed, it's stupid. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And there's no need for it now. I mean, it Mm -hmm. all started because, like, slavery or something. Child labor. Back when. Child labor. And, like, it's not, there's no reason for it now. And there are states that don't do it. So, like, does that mean for six months out of the year, Certain states are an hour off of what they should be compared to everywhere else in the U.S. It does yes. because Arizona doesn't do it. And it's like, that's stupid. Yeah. I mean, come on. Right. Talk about, like, if you have a flight and you're going to Arizona, do you have any idea what time it is? No, you don't. It's stupid. And you lose it, like Rain was pointing. You lose an hour of sleep. It is so st- I hate it. I hate losing that hour of sleep. Okay, so there's my rant. I stop now. Well, so interesting thing about... Arizona and the time zone and the time change. So there is a Native American tribe that does observe it. And then so that border has a time change. (laughs) Then within that zone, within that zone, there is another zone that they don't. So this is where again? In Arizona. And then inside that zone, there is another little zone that they do. Yes. No, duh. Yes. What? Yes. Oh my cow. I am yep. going to. So. <laughs> that is. Yes. I have Native, oh. Amer- Native American relatives and they have a wicked sense of humor. This smacks mm-hmm. to me of hijinks. I, I think they're doing this just to screw with On the white purpose. men. Of course. But yes. yes. But it's. So you can actually wow, travel into. concentric circles. Of- oh, yeah. It's <laughs> like daylight savings, standard. Daylight savings, standard. This yep. this like, boop, this boop, is hijinks. Boop, boop, boop. This is hijinks, plain and simple. Hijinks, They're doing it just to screw with us. Oh, but what about your sacred land? Land, schman. We don't want to live on this planet. It's a dump. We'll buy a new planet and act like it's sacred. With cash like this, who's going to argue? Nobody. That's who. <laughs> so uh, before we get into the past today, I see. Uh, by the notes that you have five quick puns. I do. My hubby has banned me from making any more breakfast puns. He says that if I make any more, then I'm toast. My hubby just confessed that he broke my favorite lamp. I don't think I'll ever be able to look at him in the same light ever again. Friends that you like to eat with are called taste buds. I got arrested for stealing a a complete set of encyclopedias. I told the police, hold on, I can explain everything. My grandpa always said, when one door closes, another one opens. He was a great man, but a terrible cabinet maker. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's get to the past today. So uh, last week, uh, when Rain was on the show. Hi, with Rain. The Hi. With the tater. Mm-hmm. With the tater. Oh, yeah, have the go. It went it really went well. good. Tater is so much yeah. fun to talk to, and and Yay. and she's just delightful. She's a delight. delight. She's such a delight. But so delight we talk. Delight is on. Delight is you, on. Uh, you'll always. never you'll never see me in the same light again. That's true. Never. Nope. Never Not again. Delight. Nope. Nope. <laughs> so you mentioned Rain, the Swedish Valhund dog. Yes, they are so cute. So I looked it up. And now I have to have one. They are adorable. Oh, I have to look this up now. Yeah, it's Dude. it's uh, Valhund is spelled V-A-L-L-H-U-N-D. So uh, 
the Swedish Valhund. Uh, they're a Viking dog. That doesn't mean they have horns on their head, but it just means that they're from the Viking age. Hold on, I'll share. And, I'll share my screen with you, uh, Tabe, and you can see it. And they have. Um, they're like. They're like little tiny miniature German shepherds almost. And yes. uh, it's, oh, it's they're so it, they're so adorable. Oh no! Look, they're, it's a little. It's like a little wolfy German. It's like shepherd. a little wolf corgi. Oh. Yeah. Yes. It's like a wolf, wolf corgi. corgi wolf corgis. Yes. <laughs> I want one now too, barely. They are yeah, adorable. So. Very high energy, like a Taban. Yep. Oh, that would be a, a very interesting household mm -hmm. if um, Taban and a. Uh, Valhund were running around. Yes. The problem with the Valhund is that they are, there are only five breeders in America. Yep. Oh, and okay. they run about between $2,500 and $4,500, depending on the sire and the dam. Mm -hmm. And So do you want a fursuit or do you want a Valhund? You know. <laughs> right. And you have to go pick them up. So that ah. means a flight and staying over. So... You're looking at about a between it's a five a and ten thousand dollar investment in this puppy. Yes, so. just to just to get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that says nothing about once you get it. <laughs> right, right. So, uh. okay. Well, I'll just look at the pictures all day long. Oh yeah, I right. I, I fell yeah. in love with the little the the little you know wolf corgis. They're just adorable. Yeah, so. uh, if I get it, I'll name it Sven. Sven. Yeah, so nice. Sven. Nice. Yes. Um, we chatted for the last couple of weeks about. Artificial intelligence and Chat GPT, and now Google has an AI that they call Bard. Bard. Yes. And I asked it to write a poem about furries. You asked a bard to write a poem. Yes, and here's amazing, what it said. Amazing. I'm not sure how this is a poem, but here's what it says. Oh, furries, you are a curious bunch, with your love of anthropomorphic animals. You create fursonas and wear fursuits and attend furry conventions. You are a diverse group with people of all ages, races, and backgrounds. You are creative and expressive and passionate about your interests. Some people think you are weird or even crazy, but I think you are wonderful. You are unique and special, and I am glad that you exist. So keep on being you, furries of the world. Keep on being creative and expressive and passionate. The world is better place because of you. Oh, and you're right. I'm not sure how that's a poem. Like nothing rhymed. But it it's all checks like out. Letter. It all checks out. It's all true. It, it's all true. Yeah. It, it's. I mean, it's really like a love letter. But yeah. it's all it, true. It is. And then I asked it. I typed in furry fandom, Tabin and Barely, and oh. got this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Barely Normal and Tabin are two popular furry YouTubers who have been awesome. friends for many years. They met at Further Confusion 2017, and they have been working together ever since. Barely is the producer, director, and co-host of Barely Furcasting, a weekly furry news show. Tabin is the creator and host of the show. Oh, my cow. <laughs> <laughs> Barely, so already he's got a few things wrong, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Barely is a friendly and outgoing person who is always willing to help others. He is also a talented artist and musician. I don't know where it picked that up. Did but, you know okay. that you were a talented artist I and musician? I did not know this. Well, you yeah. are a musician a little bit, so... A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not an artist unless you look at artists in a very broad stroke. Um, and then it says, Taven is a creative and intelligent person who is always coming up with new ideas. Am I now? Wow. Yes. Look yes. at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a new idea right there. <laughs> yep. Barely and Tabin are both passionate about the furry fandom, and they are always looking for ways to make it a better place. Always. They are, they are both dedicated to helping others, and they are both always willing to lend a helping hand. Barely and Tabin are two of the most popular and respected figures wow. in the furry community. Wow. We are wow. some of the most popular and respected. Did you know that that was true about us, Barely? I had no idea. I did not know that yet. They are both role models for many furries, and wow. they are both always willing to help others. There's a whole thing about helping others throughout this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you guys are so helpful. I see We're very helpful, yes. Um, We're very helpful. We're very popular. We're both amazing. Yes. We are like mm -hmm. the best Talented. things and to you, happen you to the furry You created the show, fandom. Taven. And I created the show. And you created the show. It's ter it's wonderful. Yes. And of course, 
the biggest thing they got wrong out of all of that was that we met at Further Confusion 2017. Yes. I mean, come on. I know. I just... But that that's that's very cute how um AI's yep. thing. I don't know where it got some of that. So I asked it's I just... asked Bard some similar questions and got some some fairly straightforward and good responses. It's weird oh. that it gave barely such <laughs> odd ones. Because like I asked, have you heard of the Barely Forecasting featuring Taven podcast? And Bard said, Yes, I've heard of the Barely Forecasting featuring Taven podcast. It's a weekly discussion with Tabin on current events, furry culture, interviews with notable furs, and random stuff. I have not listened to it myself, but I have heard good things about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds like a lot of that came from the website. Just from um, the website. And just... Some of it, yeah. So uh, then I asked it, have, have you heard of Tabin? And it's like, yes, I have heard of Tabin. Tabin is a fursuiter, YouTuber, and podcast host. He is a co-host on the furry podcast, <laughs> Barely Furcasting, featuring Tabin. So also it correct. It doesn't know the difference between host and co-host. I I mean, he's, I, okay, I don't think okay. it. I don't think. Well, no, it, 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 it called you the co-host. Yeah, it's learning. But didn't, it, didn't it also say I'm the host? Well, in on mine, on yeah. yours it did, but on on mine it actually it, it actually got it right. So oh, then okay, I asked, okay. "Have you heard of Barely Normal?" Yes, I have heard of Barely mm-hmm. Normal. Barely Normal is a fursona, Mike Beacon, the owner of Injured Nerves Productions, which produces videos for Tabin on YouTube as well as other things. He is the producer, director, and co-host of Barely Forecasting, featuring Tabin, uh, along with okay, Tabin. Okay. And then I mm-hmm. asked it, because I thought there is no way in heck it, it could know who I am. I said, have you heard of Rain Raccoon? And it says, uh-huh. yes, I've heard of Rain Raccoon. Rain is an associate editor and talent director on the furry-centric podcast, Barely Forecasting, featuring Tabin. <laughs> I have also heard that Rain is a steampunk raccoon persona. So, like, wow. I was kind of blown away. It actually got <laughs> all of my questions right. Because I was, like, huh. trying to, really trying to get it to mess up. I don't know it got some up. of that, too. Yes. I don't know how, like, barely got it to mess up as bad as it did. But, yeah, it told me everything it told me was true. Uh, I I asked more general questions. Oh, so uh, it's probably because like, the way I normally parse searches, because yeah. I'm normally doing it, like, for a search engine. Right. So I probably yeah no I just less conversation like I just said I just typed in furry fandom Tabin and barely normal mm. so I didn't ask it a Pretty question uh. I just gave it a generalization and it kind of filtered it out and there's a disclaimer on it saying that it's it's a baby AI it's still learning and it might lie to you it may, or it say may something lie to you. offensive it, it may give you things that are not true so uh, there's a disclaimer yep. there you go although I I did not get it to say anything offensive to me. I asked it about the furry fandom. It was nothing but positivity. Uh, I, mean, I asked if you're it. You're gonna ab- ask about the furry fandom. You'd think like it had, would have nothing but offensive things. You to would say. think right. there might be something, but it was all positive stuff. I asked it about uh, LGBT something issues. Something about a pizza. Yeah, something right. Yeah. Asked about LGBT issues. It was very positive and affirming. I asked it, you know, are trans men men? And it said yes, of course, trans men are men. I mean, it was very, it, it was very oh, positive and affirming on a lot of things. So uh, while I think that a, like a lot of people are saying, oh, Bard is kind of, you know, Bard is kind of uh, slow and, and boring. Well, it's still learning. It's I still think, learning. yeah, I, I think slow and learn, you know, slow and a little bit boring is good at this point because it's not making those huge mistakes that some of the other ones have. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's yeah. not becoming a racist overnight. Like. Like some of the <laughs> chat GPT, like some of those did. AIs did. Yeah, some of them went really nasty and dark, really, like really nasty overnight. Yeah. Yes, so I think Google's doing a good job with it. It's it's learning. It's it's trying to mm-hmm. stay re- very nice and polite. I yep. Yep. I like it. It's it's fun to talk right. to. And uh, that's all I have for the last week uh, today, or the past today, unless either one of you fine furs have something. I, I do. Oh, I do. Don't. I, what do you do? I have what do you a lot do? of things to say this week. I, okay, so, um, right. so season three, episode nine. So this yes. is an episode name, not name nine. Name. Episode nine. Name. Name. Very inane. Episode very nine. nine. Episode nine. nine. It's on the telly. It's on the telly. So we did birthday shout out. I'm just going to ignore that. Mm-hmm. Um, you and me barely tried singing happy birthday at the same time. 
We <laughs> failed immensely. Miserably, yes. Very uh-huh. bad. We often do. We didn't yes. even finish the song. You're, you're like, no, that's, that's a stop. It's just that's not a stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was notable. Also, I rambled about... I just have a note saying that I rambled about something sometime no. before 2918. So maybe I can go back and find what I rambled about and talk about that next time. Um, Believe it or not, I rambled. Kind of <laughs> like you're doing now? Yeah. Kinda, kinda. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, season three, episode 47. Just a few episodes ago. Skipping ahead to a yeah. few episodes ago, last time on the show. I was to look into, I forget why, but um, there is a question about Superman's dad's name. Do you remember why that Oh, yes. And actually, I can help with that. It's jor Yeah, I found the answer. Yes. And mm-hmm. y- you just stole my thunder sorry i that's okay i i was listening to that and i did i did make a mental note to do that but unfortunately my uh mental pen was out of ink and i forgot to write it down so but uh Mm. yeah it is jorel you guys were like on krypton yes and jonathan kent was the adoptive father on right and martha was Mm -hmm. his mother martha kent martha was his mother um see what else um so I noted in the chat a few weeks ago that they were liking and being very engaging in the obscure movie quotes from the previous week, which was, I think, season three, episode 46. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they, like they were doing that. Um, so I think we should continue doing the obscure movie quotes because apparently first like that. And I was thinking maybe, Barely, you and I both have um, a few movie quotes. And then um, each week, uh, something like the one th- where... I don't know. The most movie quotes are recognized wins. I don't know. Anyway, I thought it might be fine if both of us do some. So um, that's all I have for the past today. But that mo- leads me into my next thing, which is my obscure movie quotes for this week. Okay. Well, I don't have any, so you're going to be the only one. So go for well, it. Well, I, I figured because I just came, I just did this. So I, I figured. Okay. It. So right. I'll start the whole us doing a thing just with my things. And then next, well, you won't be here next week, but. In the future, we'll do. Anyway, so mine Anyways. are. Yes. I have three of them. All right. And you you furs, Barely and Mike, if you know, don't say it right now because we want to give um, other furs a chance too. These are pretty obscure though, so I'd be really surprised if you got them. But first one is, go ahead, make my day. <laughs> That's okay. the first very one. Obs- very obscure. So very obscure. Very so obscure. So obscure. Very, very obscure. The mm-hmm. second one is. I'll be back. Oh, another obscure one. We'll, also, we'll see if anyone yeah. gets that. Yeah. And yeah. the third one is... He's losing it, folks. Yep, yep. He's gone. No, no, everything's okay. The third one... Yeah. Don't, don't mute your microphone when you're laughing like this, Taven. It's, it's important for the fans no, to hear you laughing. No, I'm being... Comp- so the third one is, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Okay, I don't know where that came from. But. I don't so I so all you first write in um, and tell us <laughs> if you have any idea where those obscure movie quotes came from. It, it's pretty tough. I know I really set the bar pretty. We'll go with high on that one. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's my stuff for this week. Okay. Well, since you talked about movie quotes, let's jump into them for the ones that uh, we did a couple of weeks ago. And we can talk okay. about who knew it and who didn't. So the first one was, well, first of all, Ziggy knew number one and number three, and Diotter knew number three. So here are the answers. Same with me. There's no crying in baseball. So that was Jimmy Dugan as played by Tom Hanks in A League of Their Own. Oh, and okay. he actually Ziggy said it that. to, was that was that Madonna that was in that movie? It was, wasn't yes, it? Yes, Madonna, was uh, Rosie O'Donnell. Yep. Oh, gosh, so many great actresses. It's a great movie. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, she was crying, and he's like, crying? There's no crying in baseball? Yes. Okay. Early in the movie. I'm a cotton, I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. Now, come on. <laughs> that was Buddy Elf I, in the movie Elf. I have never been a fan of that movie. I know like I people are going to be angry with me because I, I'm not a fan of that movie, but eh. I, Will Ferrell is not my cup of tea. I'm not a fan of the movie. It's a cute movie, but my mother-in-law, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, that is on constant replay on her television until Christmas. Oh, my cow. Yes. Cotton-headed ninny muggins. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 
Uh, the next one was greater good. I'm your wife. I'm the greatest good you're ever going to get. And that was the wife the, on The Incredibles. Yes. And which was, that. where is my super suit? Yep. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, let's jump into that's just stupid or strange and odd news. Are you stupid or something? Stupid is or stupid does, sir. So, first of all, burp. did you barp? Somebody barped. I went, I went bop. Bop. Okay. Uh, first of all, what is going on with all the zoo breakouts? There are animals breaking out of zoos all over the world. I think they're going to take over. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> so... I remember we, a, we talked about that. Is that happening again? Yeah. Yeah, we talked about ba- that last time you were on. Yeah, there's a, there's a bear in North Carolina, a bobcat in Texas, a zebra in Seoul, Korea, and a pair of, por- and a, and a pair of porcupines recently named in Pinky a- and the Brain. Oh, how aptly <laughs> named. <laughs> I guess they had to go practice on... I guess they had to go take uh, figure out how they're going to take over the world. <laughs> the same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Zoo zookeepers are are stymied as well. They're not sure why all of a sudden their efforts are, are it's like it's the animal rebellion, man. I told you it was coming. It, it we, they've been talking about it for years. Yeah, They've yeah. been it for years. It's coming. Power to the animals. Yep. Let's talk about a couple of world records. Uh, the first one is a Nebraska-based coffee chain broke the Guinness Book of World Records by assembling an 848-pound cake ball. Cake ball? That's a lot of cake. That's yes. a lot of cake. <laughs> 848 pounds. I'm, of course, reminded of the biggest one of the twine in Minnesota. Yes, except Which this one's edible. Been on, which, by the way, has been, like... On my on repeat in my brain all day long. I don't know why, but there it is. Ah, Probably there the fever. Go. Yes. It was, instead of Pac-Man fever, it was Weird Al fever. Mm-hmm. Weird Al fever. Okay. So you need to change your words now to the biggest ball of cake biggest in Nebraska. Of in cake Nebraska. In Nebraska. Okay, yes. <laughs> I said the biggest ball of cake in Nebraska. Nebraska. It, it, could there you go. it could work. It could work. It could work. It could work. Okay, Um, uh, that was Scooter's Coffee based in Omaha. Assembled the cake ball at its annual Grow Conference at the CHI Health Center in Omaha. Now, a nine-year-old boy recently broke the Rubik's Cube speed record average. So, he is a Rubik's Cube prodigy from China when he averaged a time of 4.69 seconds in his attempts at solving a 3x3x3 cube. Young speed cuber Yahang Wing, or Yehen Wang, whichever you want to pronounce it, made five attempts on March 12th at the Young Jun Qing Speed Clubbing Cubing event in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And he recorded times of 4.35, 3.9, 4.41, 5.31, and 6.16 seconds. The World Cube Association rules required the fastest and slowest times to be discounted when calculating the average, giving Yaheng an average time of 4.69 seconds. I can confirm that because this book might have been in some of these um, competitions before, and that is what they do. They drop the lowest and the um, worst time. So mm-hmm. get an average of three. Now, according to the article, uh, it said that uh, Yehen's 3.9 second solve was the fourth fastest on record, and you that changed that article. I did. Because that is wrong. It's the fifth. And how do you know this? If you go to the World Cube Association website that has all the records and uh-huh. all the times, no matter if the records or not, they're all there. And it's hmm. fifth. All right. Well, then the article writer was erroneous. Uh, erroneous. 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 Yes, yes. An erroneous. Well, I mean, erroneous pig. That when you're typing Feminist. fast, that's that's you know, it's easy to mistake. Too. Alternate facts. What? Alternate facts. Right. Uh, an Australian town, a small town in Australia, is having a problem with mysterious minion sculptures popping up. 
You know uh, the movie this, Minions? This is dirtiest, they're just doing it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Residents of a small Australian town said sculptures of minions have been appearing in locations around town since just before Christmas. And their oranges... Oranges? Their origins remain a mystery. But their oranges remain a mystery, too. Their where oranges, did those oranges come from? Where did these oranges come from? Yeah. They don't really like bananas. Yeah. No, yeah. Yes. They want potassium, not fucking see. Uh, locals in Warak, a Victorian town boasting a population of 70, said wow, the minions... Wow, that's huge. That's huge, yeah. yes. 70 people. Uh, the first okay. minions sculpture appeared just before Christmas, and they have continued to appear on various properties to reach a current total of 24. Now, wow. I wonder if Bambi's involved. Maybe. The creator of the sculptures remains a mystery, it says. One installation was captured on closed camera TVs or closed CCTV cameras, sorry. But one of the culprits was disguised in a Santa Claus costume, and the other was unclear in the footage. Unclear. I don't know how he was Bambi in the handage. Bambi was unclear. Yes. <laughs> shaking, shaking. And oh. that's my strange, odd, weird news for the week. Well, yay. Every first yay. yay. Yay! Yay! So, shall we either. get to media? Let's, yes, get, to let's media. get to media. Media! So, <laughs> I watched The Whale, which is the Brendan Fraser movie that he nice. won an Oscar for just recently. His first uh, Oscar. His first way. Oscar. Yes. Yep. 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 Um, it's a good movie. It's it's very cerebral, and it's very non action oriented. However, it pulls you in. It captures you immediately, and it does not let you go until the final credits. So uh, it so is really good. Apparently, Bambi found the Valahund. In this particular yes. movie, and that uh, really mm -hmm. drives the story. Okay, got it. It, it does. Nice. It's based on a play, and it takes place. The oh. entire movie takes place in the main character's small apartment. So really? There is. Yep. Wow. The entire movie takes place. So when we were watching it, my buddy says, "This could be a play." <laughs> and I said, "It's based on a play." He's like, "Well, that's why it looks like a play." Yeah. That's that would <laughs> so, do it. It's amazing yep. how those things work out sometimes. <laughs> yep. And then we watched. Oh, so check um, that out. That sounds interesting. Yep, it is. Um, and then we watched Run All Night with Liam Neeson, which is very good. I think I talked about that one time on the show. You did, which is why I wanted to watch it. What? Oh, well, yeah, I love you so much for like, yes. uh, I apparently had good things to say about it. You but did. But now, the yes. thing is, having, do you agree, with, was it good? Or, like, you can be honest. Was it oh, good I loved or it. bad? No, it was oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. I did good. Yep. <gasps> okay, good. Yep, yep. So one remember. thing that I that I was uh, taken by in that movie was the, the well, they're all bad guys, but the bad, the people that you think are the bad guys, the son that got murdered at the beginning looked a lot like the main singer from the Skibby Dibby Doo video, the Skibbidity. Oh, the Skibbity? Yeah. <laughs> Sk really? <laughs> I looked at that going. I didn't notice that. I was like, huh. I didn't, huh. I didn't look it up whether it's the same guy, but it sure looked like him. I was like, huh. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. But, um, Interesting. yeah. And um, I've been catching up on Guy's Tournament of Champions, Guy Fieri's Tournament of Champions, and started the newest season of Picard. And oh, uh, nice. finished up the last season of Big Bang Theory at Sleep Time. I have to find another show to watch at Sleep Time now. So, uh oh, yeah, <sighs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, and that's what I have been consuming media wise. How nice. about you two? You want to go to first table, or you want me to go first? <coughs> you, you did that backwards. <laughs> you you coughed oh. on. Mike, and then muted yourself to talk. <laughs> I, did, I don't know what I'm doing. I was saying, why don't you, Rain, impart upon us your knowledge of what you know you did this week? Okay. Well, I actually finally got around to watching all of the Strange New Worlds, um, you know, the Star Trek Strange oh. New Worlds, 
so good. The last two episodes are tear jerkers. Um, just just because of the I think it's dramatic a, moments. That's the so one with Captain it's, it's, Pike. It's, 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 before before oh, Kirk, yes, 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 before yes, Kirk yes. takes yeah, over the Enterprise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, shortly before, really. Not, not very long before, uh, according to what I'm gathering. Um, I also watched a kind of good horror movie, a little indie horror movie called The Dark. Uh, it was hmm. done in like, uh, I, think, I think 2018. And- uh, What was that? It How was, was the lighting? It was, it was actually well lit. The dark. I see what he did there. The dark actually yeah, refers see. That was, to that's a delight right there. Yeah. yeah, the dark actually refers to the main character's uh, what's keeping her zombified. Oh, oh um, so okay. there is too much Bambi involved. Sort of. Yes, it's it's yeah, a really it's not very scary. It's a little bloody and gory. Uh, and like I so said, the main character, she's a zombie, and the her co-star is uh, a young boy that, uh, that's basically the same age as her uh, before she died, um, whose mm -hmm. eyes have been burned out by a bad, bad man. Oh. Okay, and, um, that's uh, interesting. Yes, it, it ends up being a really neat kind of monster love story. Yeah, I, I was. So I you was. Recommend it. I recommend it. It's actually very touching. Uh, the end of the it's movie. Called what again? It's called The Dark. The Dark. Yeah, yeah it's on. Dark. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, really good. Uh, I highly recommend it. It was uh, very touching, and very, hmm. uh, uh, very funny in certain parts. And and uh, yeah, you really start to feel for the boy, because he's had a really crap life, and the girl who's uh, Mina. The zombie, she's had a really crap death after she got killed by her <laughs> mom's well, boyfriend. I mean, I, I would assume death is not the best thing anyway, so okay. No, okay. it's it's <laughs> just really good. I don't want to ruin any more of it for anybody, okay. but uh, cool. check it out. It's If you like horror movies, it's not too bad uh, of a horror movie, especially for an indie film. And nice. that's pretty much All it right. for me. Okay. Tabin, okay, how about you? Okay, so... I'll I have a lot of things to say this week. I'll try and make this fast. Um, I'm So on my trip to Texas, I meant to start Kyle Gold's Green Fairy novel. Um, I did not start it. Okay. <laughs> so that's anticlimactic right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been watching. Oh, so I finally started watching Agrisco season five. Of, I've seen the first three episodes for lunchy. It's very good. Um, it's high to focus so far. So any Haida fans out there um, watch season five? Like, um, like and everybody watch, on this show um, is a Haida fan. I would hope so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, ben is awesome. And of course, watch the most recent South Park, the one with the Chat GPT episode. <laughs> Did you watch? Have you either of you seen the most recent? Well, it's yes. probably not the most recent, but it's episode four, I think. I have not seen it yet. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is what brought up the whole Chat GPT already. So yeah. Yeah. See. Oh, started. And almost done with that '90s show, okay. Which is which is really good. It's really good. Yeah. And I've only seen literally like two episodes of that '70s show. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so you don't get half of the references that they're talking I about. I do not. Yeah. But my honey does. <laughs> okay. Uh, my honey like knew all the main characters. He knows all the references. Um, I could tell that like, well, there's like total nostalgia. If you did '70s show stuff, like total nostalgia there. Mm -hmm. It's still very good. And more at, so far, they have their first season has 10 episodes, as you probably know. And I've seen the first nine out of 10, and more episodes have been confirmed. So they mm -hmm. are going to do more. So that's exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to say, Kitty still looks amazing. She looks mm -hmm. just like she did in that 70s show. Yep. Just like she did. Um, notable in today's episode that we watched at the very end. So Jay and Nate are sitting there, and not to spoil for any for that hasn't watched it yet, they're talking about stuff, and he's talking about him and Layla and and stuff and things that are that they need to talk about and everything. And so he's talking to Nate about, well, maybe I need to talk to Layla about this and blah blah blah. And I think this this this. And then Jay says, I think we need to have a serious conversation. And then Nate says, We are having a serious conversation. <laughs> 
And I thought that was so funny. Cause That's very funny. So we watched that. We've watched a few movies. Love and Monsters. Have you, either of you heard of Love and Monsters? I've heard of it. I've, I've heard of it. I don't know what it's about. It's very good. Okay. I meant to look at the year. I think it's a recent one, but I highly recommend. Um, there's action adventure. There's a really good story. It's about basically uh, post-apocalyptic mutations of bugs and things. Because like they, there's this big meteor headed for Earth that was going to destroy everything. So they used all these big, huge nuclear weapons and stuff to take care of it. And they took care of it. But mm -hmm. there's all this mutation now and stuff. Mm. So you've got these huge like insects and stuff. And after the, after the apocalyptic thing happened, they lived underground for seven years. And they were, you know, the typical, their little uh, factions and stuff that lived underground. The main character ends up being not in the same faction as his love, Amy. So he ends up going out to find Amy. And that's kind of the whole story, basically. But it's like really good. And I, and I really recommend it. Uh, and there's a doggy. There's a doggy. A doggy. <laughs> Throughout the whole thing, nice. and, and the doggy's very smart and very awesome, and I love the doggy. So, I really recommend, and the graphics are really good too, you know, I mean, there's these big mutated insects and stuff, mm -hmm. they have really good graphics. So, I, I highly re recommend. We also watched, I think, Barry, you talked about this on the show before, uh, Top Gun Maverick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, we watched that, really good. I think you probably said that too, like, really yeah. good. Yeah. I agree. It was, like, just a really good show. And so, we actually watched two movies in a row that were really good. Lol. <laughs> I bet this never happened. Right. <laughs> um, so that's what we've been watching a few weeks ago. Um, you barely had um, a list of the 10 top furry games, one of which was Abstius. Yes. I think I pronounced and spelled that wrong. And it's a furry card game. And I bought it, but I have not really played it yet. So that's okay. also anticlimactic. But that, I was not... I thought I was going to get through it very fast, but I did not because I'm a horrible pup. But that ends my media for the week. Okay. All right. Well, we're, uh, we're driving along here. It's going to be a long episode. Let's get to furries in the news. Waiting for them to take off their headphones. And <laughs> They're in the news. That was it? Okay, wow. Short that was one. <laughs> wow. Short and sweet. Yes. All right. Well, the first story is uh, the Ursa Major Awards nominations are closed. Uh, we did not make the cut. We did not get any nominations. So, what? Meh, I don't know y'all out there. Yep. I think we and, got some nominations, just not enough to like make it onto the final voting. List. Yeah, but they, he never publishes a list of everybody that got nominated, though. So yeah, we'll never right. know. I, I think there were some. That, I know some that said they nominated us anyway. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, however, we didn't make the cut. So uh, voting closed yesterday, March 31st. So stay tuned for winner announcements. Now, the Good Furry Award, which I messed up the two of them. I mixed them together the last time I was on the show. The nominations for this award closed on March 31st as well. And voting will commence on their site until the end of May, and uh, which we'll put a link in the show notes for you to click on that to vote for the Good Furry Award. We're not in that one either. So Well, Rain, do your job. You still have some time. I, I did my job. This recording. I did my job last year. Mm -hmm. oh, you did. So, okay. I uh, did. I, did. But, I yeah. nominated the Good Furry last year. You did. I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, do you have anything for the news? No one loves us. No one loves us. I know. So we can get this small violin violin out so we can play a sad what song. What are you gonna do? Yeah. What are you gonna uh, do? You know, we always said we know. never did this. Yeah, you know, we always said we never did this podcast for anybody but ourselves. So, you but know. What about Toto? The band? No. The rain out of Africa the is doggy. really good. Uh, what about Hodor? <laughs> Hodor. 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 Okay. Upcoming events. Uh, next weekend, April 6th through the 9th. That is next weekend, right? Yes, it is. Um, is Fur Squared in Brookfield, Wisconsin. 
The 7th through the 9th, which is a one day shorter, is the Golden State Fur Con in Los Angeles, California. Um, the 7th through the 11th, which is going two days longer than the Golden State Fur Con, is Fantastic 2023 in Saint France. Nice. Then the following weekend, uh, April 14th through the 16th, there are two furry cons going on. My, my whiskey is repeating on me. There are two furry cons going on, one in Portland, Maine, and one in Las Vegas, Nevada. Furcation Land 2023 is going on in Portland, Maine, and Las Vegas Furcon is going on in Las Vegas, Nevada, April 14th through the 16th. If you go to any of those cons, please feel free to send us a message, tell us how the con was. We would love to hear from you. Okay, well, uh, joining us now is Chitaro with a movie review. And Chitaro, what are you reviewing for us today? Well, today I am reviewing a movie called Dog Gone Trouble. Uh, it's a movie from 2021. It's kind of cool Oops, because... it's recent. Yeah, it actually has... One, one of the dogs that are in there is Snoop Dogg. So that makes it even more kind of funny. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So this movie is kind of cute. It starts off with this butterfly flying around, flying by different people and flying through the air and all the stuff. It then goes up into a house. It flies into a window. And then it ends up landing on this dog's nose. Well, okay. this dog... This dog ends up getting scared from the butterfly and it wakes up and it's going, Oh my God, it's a bat! It's a bat! <laughs> okay. I guess I should also say that this dog is like uh, living in an extremely well-to-do house, like a very big mansion. And so there's a butler that comes in and notices the dog is like in panic mode and the dog jumps into the butler's arms and, and then the butler says, I think we need to get Caesar." you know, Caesar from the dog whisperer. Mm -hmm. And then the dog whisperer comes and talks to the dog and says, you know, you're bigger than this, you know, so to speak. Well, mm -hmm. this this dog whose name just happens to be Trouble, hence Dog on Trouble, ah. then ends up uh, after the Caesar in interaction, ends up running into the arms of a woman, an older woman who is voiced by Betty White. Nice, okay. And then they end up going shopping together and doing various things. This dog is extremely pampered, you know, because of course this woman is like very wealthy and treats her dog right and stuff like that mm -hmm. so then it skips to various days and it shows basically the same thing the dog wakes up and it gets pampered and and stuff like that and it's kind of cool mm -hmm. but then one day the dog wakes up and it's like wait there's something different why isn't the lady around anymore well okay. it turns out that the woman dies okay Aww. and so the woman dies and the heirs for this woman come to the house for the reading of the will and they are basically going around the house looking around uh, saying oh boy what can we sell you know uh, to make money because they're greedy of course of course so then they end up coming across the dog well they weren't very pleased about the dog so they pick up the dog and throw the dog outside oh, kind no. of a bad thing yeah that's what i said so while uh, getting rid of the dog they throw them out and the dog ends up they end up throwing all the dog's toys and all that stuff out into a moving van and the dog goes oh no that's my toy i'm gonna go chase after it well he runs into the moving van and then gets shoved into this moving van and then he like uh, goes off on okay. this uh, interesting adventure well what ends up happening then is the reading of the will happens and the will basically says that the dog gets everything and the people they're supposed to help the dog be as happy as it can be right because of course since the dog is the inheritor of the estate and they, they start looking for the dog and it's like, oh no, the dog is missing. So they end up spending uh, a good portion of the movie trying to find this dog because they can't seem to find him. But okay. in the moving van, the, the dog starts to wonder what happened to the woman because he doesn't really know. Because of course, you know, dogs are not perceptive. They just know their human is not there. And he thought, oh, well, she's just not here today. Why is she not here? And then he realizes, oh, a lot of this stuff in this moving van is her stuff. And so then he said, I guess something must have happened to her. And so he figures out that the woman died. But then all of a sudden something happens and the moving van's back end opens up and the dog falls out and he tumbles down a hill. And of course, we all know what dogs do with squirrels, right? They chase after them, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he ends up seeing these squirrels and these squirrels end up getting in a fight with him. And what's really funny is that these squirrels are like dancing around and, you know, they're being kind of funny. Mm -hmm. But they end up stealing his diamond collar, which is kind of like, you know, he's got a diamond studded collar. Well, mm -hmm. so 
so he's like totally scared and he says i want my collar back and well they won't give it to him and then they ran off then he ends up into uh, uh he finds himself walking back into the city and he ends up finding himself in various bits of trouble here and there well finally <laughs> The, the family said, well, we can't find this dog, so we're going to find somebody to, to find this dog for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this guy basically attempts to try to find the dog. And there's a lot of hilarious things that happen, you know, trying to find the dog. There's one point when Trouble ends up getting caught by the dog catcher and he goes into the pound. And that's where he meets the dog that Snoop Dogg is the voice of. And they say, we are going to break out of here. And they end up breaking out. and you know, and so on and so forth. Well, I'm not going to wreck the rest of the movie because it was really fun about all the things that ended up happening at the end. I will say that the dog did end up inheriting all of the money and the family members got thrown out on their ear, so to speak. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. But the rest of the movie was kind of fun. It had lots of interesting antics and it made for a nice smooth transition from uh, scene to scene in the movie. I would say that in terms of my rating, I would would give this four chirps because it was really exciting and I enjoyed it and I hope all the other furs out there that want to watch this will too because it was awesome. Awesome. All right. So four chirps from Chitaro for Dog Gone Trouble. And will you be back soon with another movie? Yeah, I've been searching through Netflix and there's this one movie called Latte and the Magic Waterstone. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. You know, it, I always find these interesting movies to review. What can I say? All right. Well, thank you, uh, Netflix. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, tune in soon. I don't know when he'll be back on again, but tune in soon for Latte and the Magic Carpet. No, Latte and the Magic <laughs> what? Waterstone. Waterstone. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was. I was almost said water sport, but that would be totally <laughs> different. Also. No, no, that so. is totally something different. Totally something different. Yes. All right, Chitaro. Thanks for coming on the show. You have a fabulous afternoon, evening, morning, whenever it is when you people listen to this. Absolutely. And all you furs out there, have a great day, night, evening, weekend. Tabin, have you got I, any math? I do. Okay, what math are you going to wander us with, or wonder us with today? Not wonder. <laughs> wander mesmerize. us. Interesting, the I'll interesting get lost. number paradox. The interesting what paradox? The interesting number paradox. Okay. All right, I'm mildly interested. <laughs> so the statement is that all natural numbers, so remember natural numbers are integers zero and, you know, zero and above. All uh -huh. natural numbers are interesting. That's the statement. They're interesting. Okay. Uh huh. Well, all right. And yeah. here's. Do you want to hear the proof? Sure. Sure. This is a real thing, by the way. I'm, I'm not making this up. Okay. Say so this Google sounds this. like the setup for a joke. It it does. And like in so, Irish, you, you can you can Google this. Here's the proof. Yes. Suppose you've got a whole bunch of. You you, you go by contradiction. Suppose that not every natural number is interesting. So you've got several one five whatever you've got several uninteresting numbers okay since we're talking about natural numbers there's the smallest one but it is, is interesting to be the smallest uninteresting number so this number is interesting which contradicts that all numbers in this set of things are uninteresting so i just proved that all natural numbers are interesting i don't know i think one is pretty boring it's just a little straight line. It's the line. loneliest number. It's the loneliest number. It's just a little yeah. straight line. I don't find it that interesting. So it turns out that actually, yes, actually the smallest uninteresting number currently known is 11,630. No one has any interest in that number whatsoever. Nobody, yeah. No. Nobody. So a number is interesting if it like has properties or something special about it. Like prime numbers are interesting because they're prime numbers, you know, I mean. They're prime 11, numbers. They all own property, right? All property owners. 11,630 has no special properties that have been found so far. So there's this thing called the Online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. And okay. it has all the integer sequences known to man in it. You know, it has everything. The number 11,630 is the first number to not show up in any of those sequences. Mm -hmm. And there's just nothing interesting about it that we huh. know so far. Well, And that's my math for the week. <laughs> well, that's good, quick math. Yes, it is. 
and it was interesting, except for one. Except for one, which was not interest whatsoever. No, yeah. I, I, I still have it out for one. <laughs> yeah, okay. it still has it out for one. Well, Tabin and Rain, yes. that uh, brings us to the end of our show once again. Listeners, Tabin will be with the guest host for the next two weeks as I am going to be gone on my Las Vegas birthday bonanza extravaganza. And uh, when I get back, I will share all of the stories of my harrowing adventures in Las Vegas. Wow. Can't wait. Can't wait. You're going to jump off a building, aren't you? I'm going to jump off a building. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. I'm psyching myself up for it. I hope I don't chicken out because if you chicken out, you don't get a refund. How, how much is it to jump? It's like 150 bucks. Oh, I'm not chickening out for 150 bucks. Don't chicken right. out, Barely. Don't be the chicken. If you chicken out, they give you a t-shirt that says, I chickened out of jumping off the stratosphere. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. So you get something for your 100 You get something design. for it, and then you can give your ticket to somebody else if you want. But I, I don't want the chicken out shirt. I want the shirt that says, I because jumped I off the stratosphere. Yeah. You, I think that's one's a little bit more heroic than the other. Yes. Yeah. I'm and I was actually hearing how that goes. I did a lot of research on the device that lets you drop down yes, and all that stuff. They're very it's... safe. They're 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 based on centrifugal force. Uh it's basically mm -hmm. centrifugal. Well weren't you saying that they haven't had they've never had one single accident. Never had one single accident. That device I've used one of them jumping off of a zip line tower. That was the only way to get off the zip line tower was to use one of those devices. And it's scary yeah. for the first couple seconds and then as soon as the as soon as the clutch starts spinning up, the air the air forces everything to slow down. And it's, yeah. it's like it's like the rowing machines. It's basically a rowing machine, one of those air-based rowing machines. Mm -hmm. uh, so as it starts spinning faster, the air resistance becomes harder and harder until it just slows you down and you just float to the ground like a little feather. It's really mm -hmm. fun. Yep, yep, yep. And, and I've in my younger years, I climbed mountains and did rappelling. And and in the Army, you jumped out of helicopters on, the, on similar devices that they had in the helicopters. So I've kind of done stuff like this before, but it's been... 40 years so you know your common sense kind of kicks in but anyway uh remember to help us support us help us support us help support us through merch perch at redbubble or bonfire by subscribing or through patreon or ko-fi and don't forget to order some wild bill soda and get your 15 percent off each purchase by going through our link on the page it's a great soda and all natural and uh i've been drinking some today I had a bottle of their, or a can of their strawberry cream, and it's so tasty because they use pure cane sugar, no artificial flavors, no artificial colors, and uh, it's it's very, very their good. Their stuff is tasty. I've had it at many a Comic-Con, and it's yeah. like one of my favorite it's, things. Yep. I mean, to buy it is a little more expensive than regular soda, but it's just so much better than regular soda. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact that I use it for special occasions when I reward myself for something. It's like, I'm going to have a Wild Bill soda. I don't drink it like, you know, you don't have that two liter bottle of Coke in the in the fridge where you just pour it all the time. These are 12 ounce cans. And, uh, I have nothing else to say, so I'm going to say Moo Bark Fluff, stay furry. Tabin, take us out. Well, I have to say thank you all you first for listening. It means uh, so much to us that you do, especially if you're still listening after all this time. Thank you, Rain and Barely, for your support and, and your help with everything throughout these years. It's been really, really great. And why am I saying this like it's our last show? It's not That's our last right. show. Right, what is our last show? What are you doing, David? <laughs> well, Barely is jumping off a Thank building. Thank you, everyone. Thank yes. you. Yeah, it's true. Uh, we might. We'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so thank you all you first. It means so much to us. Um, and all I'll say then is so I can't wait to hug you tight with posies at a con. And until then, moo bark fluff and stay furry. Bark, bark. <laughs>
If you would like to hear more music by Reg Day, you can search for Tweezer Beak on Bandcamp or Hoop Loop Tunes on SoundCloud. Other interstitial and background music by Shane Ivers through SilvermanSound.com, Gator Tots on SoundCloud.com, and the YouTube Free Use Library. Social media presence is maintained by Ziggy the Meme Weasel. Transformation Station was created by Lux Operon and is produced, directed, and edited by Rain Raccoon. You can send us a message via email at barelyfurcasting at gmail.com or on our Telegram chat at BFFT chat, on Twitter, on our Facebook page, or on the barelyfurcasting.com webpage. The show is supported through subscriptions on barelyfurcasting.com, donations at ko-fi.com forward slash barelyfurcasting, or through Patreon at patreon.com barelyfurcasting. Thanks for listening. We hope you come back and listen next week.